There are words, but how many and which ones can adequately express a century of moments and emotions that are the legacy of Eastern Michigan University's Grand Concert Hall? So many students, so many faculty, performers, visitors, so many from the Ypsilanti community have had an experience in Pease Auditorium since it opened in 1915. It has become the face of Eastern's music program, though it was really that accomplished program that secured this gem's place on campus. Eastern was originally founded as Michigan State Normal School in 1849 to train teachers, and just five years later created a music department to ensure its graduates were trained in this core schoolhouse skill. It wasn't long after that 19-year-old Frederick Pease came to Ypsilanti to assist in the music instruction of the normal students. In 1863, at age 24, he was given the title Professor of Music and Director of the Music Program. In 1880, in response to a growing demand for advanced music instruction in Michigan schools, the state formally established the Conservatory of Music at the Normal, inviting Frederick Pease to serve as its organizer and first director. Within the conservatory, he developed the first four-year music program at the Normal and initiated a series of events that would have a strong impact on Ypsilanti residents. Conservatory students and faculty held weekly public recitals called the Wednesday Four O'Clocks, and Pease created a lecture and entertainment course featuring an annual community concert by the Normal Choir. The local town and gown relationship flourished in Ipsy as many citizens attended concerts and recitals at the Normal School, which became Michigan State Normal College in 1899. They also participated in private lessons and sang in the prestigious Normal Choir. The scope and quality of the school's music program was top flight through Pisa's death in 1909. His successor, Frederick Alexander, perpetuated Pease's vision while making his own mark on the program over his 32-year tenure. His expertise in vocal music propelled the 200-voice Normal Choir to national prominence. Alexander also introduced instrumental music into the official Normal curriculum, encouraged the formation of the college's first student orchestra, and promoted the student-run band to curricular status. And it was on Frederick Alexander's watch that in 1914 construction began on Pease Auditorium, a structure designed to be worthy of the music tradition that had been cultivated in Ypsilanti for 50 years. The auditorium opened in the spring of 1915, initially named for Michigan's first superintendent of instruction, John D. Pierce. But a petition from students, faculty, and citizens convinced the state that the concert hall should be named for the man who devoted 45 years of his life to the teacher training school in town on the banks of the Huron River. The Philadelphia Symphony Orchestra was the first of countless national and international performances of prominence to take the Pease stage. Early audiences hailed the acoustics of the auditorium that was built on the principles of quality that had always set the tenor for Michigan State normal. Pease was always a focal point of music instruction and provided students and the community the opportunity to take the stage in a world-class performance venue. But for a century, it has also been a destination for headline artists. The Detroit Symphony Orchestra has made several visits, including in celebration of the auditorium centennial. But Pease has been not only a home to the classics, one alumnus from the 1920s recalled Pease as a big social center, a grand place to gather. She remembers John Philip Sousa marching his band up from Ypsilanti's Depot Town for a concert in Pease, as well as a performance by jazz band legend Paul Whiteman and a poetry reading by E.E. E. Cummings. When it opened its doors, the auditorium became Michigan State Normal's cultural center, a mantle it carried through to when the school became Eastern Michigan University in 1959. Along the way, ever growing into campus's anchor venue for ceremonial and educational functions. And all along, students took the stage, not just for music, but for pageants, theater, readings, skits, pep rallies, some quite meaningful, some as goofy as the farcical bong show talent competition, or as hopeful as Eastern Idol, the amused version of the popular American Idol TV show. 
These students walked in the same footlights graced by countless luminaries, such as First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, Vice President Hubert Humphrey, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, Roots author Alex Haley, Nobel scientist Linus Pauling, and artists such as the Joffrey Ballet, the Alvin Ailey Dancers, opera star Beverly Sills, actress Cicely Tyson, jazz greats Duke Ellington and Wynton Marsalis, and pop and rock acts ranging from The Temptations to Genesis to The Bare Naked Ladies. They took the stage in a superior performance facility that's proved a beautiful and gracious host for a hundred years. Many would say the auditorium's signature jewel is its Aeolian Skinner pipe organ, made possible by a bequest by Frederick Alexander and dedicated in 1960. Pease has faced its share of challenges through the years, as any workhorse building will as it ages. The most serious came in the early 1990s, when the auditorium was mothballed after years of inadequate maintenance funding left the once proud structure deteriorating. But the group, the Friends of Pease, founded by alumni and concerned community members, worked to target and raise funds that restored Pease Auditorium and returned it to its rightful place as a campus centerpiece. Pease Auditorium represents what's best about Eastern Michigan University. Artistry, scholarship, involvement, tradition. Its perfect walls serve as cradle for these qualities. And those who have passed through its doors and across its stage share in that legacy and return it in kind. Truly it's that resonance that's allowed Pease to endure for a hundred years, and perhaps for a hundred more, 